I'm feeling a little rusty because I haven't sat down to record a YouTube video in a little while, but I've refreshed my setup ever so slightly and I'm feeling ready to dive back into the world of YouTube. And I thought, what better way to start than to sort of recap the previous year and look at what actually goes into a year in the life of a six-figure web designer. And when I say web designer, I actually mean I run my own web design business. I don't work for another web design agency or anything like that. So all clients that I've worked with came in through my own websites, word of mouth, lots of different things. And we'll go over what all of those referral sources were for 2023. And we'll also talk about like, what were the good things that happened in 2023 from a professional and personal standpoint? And what were some of the areas that I wanna work on or maybe change things as we head into this new year? Overall, I would say I'm really proud of how the last year went. I focused a ton on getting some really fantastic clients. I worked with some of my all time favorite clients in the last year, designed some amazing websites, got even clearer about the type of clients that I wanna work for or with and the type of work that I wanted to do. And that just really made the year flow so much better. On the other side of that, I had big dreams when it came to creating content for YouTube last year and creating more courses and programs and digital products. And a lot of that was put on the back burner because I got so busy with client work in the middle of the year. Part of me feels like I kind of went heads down in May and June with client projects and didn't really come back up again until almost the end of October. And that felt really overwhelming. Let's start with what things looked like from a professional perspective and what it actually takes to make six figures in your design business. Now I'm gonna be looking over here at my notes. If you see me shift my gaze, that's what I'm doing. I wanted to make sure I had all of the data for you to kind of walk through and explain how many clients I had, where they came from, and again, what that looked like behind the scenes so that you can really see what this might look like for you if you're interested in becoming a web designer or really any other type of service-based business who works with clients. A big shout out to HoneyBook, which is my client relationship management software that tracks all of this data for me and keeps it all together in a really nice report that I can reference at any time. This is where I got all this data. I highly, highly recommend that if you are a service provider, especially a web designer, that you have a CRM like HoneyBook. I'm gonna include my coupon for 50% off in the description below in case you wanna check it out for yourself. According to HoneyBook, I had 139 new leads come in through my website contact form last year, which is great. So how this works is I create a contact form inside of HoneyBook. I embed that form on my website. It fits in really nicely with the design of my site. As soon as somebody fills that form out, they are automatically added to HoneyBook as a lead and HoneyBook sends me reminders to follow up with them and lets me create custom invoices, contracts, proposals to send to them to kind of start that client process. I will say that even though I had 139 total leads, some of those were spam, some of those were people asking for links on my website. If you're someone who is also in the content marketing space, you'll know as soon as you get any type of traction or growth that you're going to start getting all of these messages from people trying to get you to link to their website or to guest post on your blog. Even though I have it very clearly stated on my website that I don't accept guest posts, or if I am gonna do sponsored content, it's only with brands that I know and love, uh, and it's only paid opportunities, right? I'm not doing any of that for free. I still get lots of inquiries. And some of them, even though I have a link on my site for a separate contact form for those type of inquiries, some of them still squeeze through to my primary web design inquiry form and I just have to archive them. Half the time I don't even respond anymore. I get quite a few of them and they're really annoying. I would say I probably get three a month or so. So do the math. Not all of those inquiries were people specifically interested in my services. Some of them were just interested in somehow getting featured on my blog for free. Of those 139 leads, 24 of them actually booked as clients of mine. And my conversion rate was actually quite good. So if I look at my conversion rate, it is 76%, meaning that out of all the proposals that I sent out, 
in the previous year, 76% of those ended up becoming paying clients. I prefer to look at the conversion rate for proposal sent to clients book rather than leads to clients booked because like I said, I get a lot of leads that aren't necessarily relevant and I also get a lot of leads that may not be in my price range. So I'm not even gonna send them a proposal to begin with. I may just send them that first email or know right away from the email that they send or the message that they put in that contact form that we're not gonna be a good fit. So maybe I refer them somewhere else or just let them know that we can't take this any further. So again, 76% of people that I actually sent a proposal contract or invoice to ended up becoming a paying client or customer. My biggest month of the year for new booked projects was February. And my second biggest month just behind that was May. So early in the year was really big for my business. You kind of get that rush of people who are trying to make big changes in Q1, trying to get things done for their business, trying to get things moving. So this is a great time of year for me personally in my business. And then a lot of that work from February and May, February probably got done, you know, March, April, and then May work really got done June, July. And that's why for me, June and July were so busy. My worst month of the year was actually August. And this is for new booked projects. So I didn't book a lot of new projects in August. I was on vacation. My family goes to the beach at the end of August. So I was completely gone that week and finishing up some client projects before I went away. So I probably didn't market myself as much as I could have. Also June and July were so busy. I just wasn't marketing myself as much in general during those months because I was actually heads down doing the client work. So August, even though I had a six figure revenue last year, I only booked about $2,000 worth of new projects in the month of August. So if you are somebody who is shooting to hit that six figure mark in your business, just know that it's not always gonna be consistent. You're not always gonna be hitting those consistent 10K months. I would say in general, I definitely was at the 10K or higher per month mark, but there were some months that were pretty low and August was the lowest. The second worst month in my business was actually last month and that is December and you can guess why, holidays, people are busy, people are out of the office. I just wasn't really focused as much on booking new work. I'm okay with that. December tends to be a pretty slow month for me anyway. Now let's look at my lead sources. So where are those new leads actually coming from? And for me, my number one lead source from the previous year was Google. It actually looks like 23% of new leads came in from Google, which is awesome because for me, that's not content that I'm creating on a daily or weekly basis. That's all work that I've done in the past that's continuing to bring in clients month over month in the future. My second most popular lead source from last year was actually YouTube, which I love to see because that is another evergreen marketing channel that brings in content even when I'm not consistently posting. I will say I would have liked to be a little bit more consistent on YouTube last year than I actually was. I started the year off super strong. When client work got busy in May, June, July, I fell off the bandwagon a little bit and I hopped back on at the end of the year and tried to finish strong, but I just wasn't as consistent as I liked, as I would have liked. But considering all that, I am very happy that YouTube was my second most popular lead source and Google and YouTube together, they work well, right? You've got YouTube videos ranking in Google search, driving people to your blog content where they fill out your contact form. So no surprise that those two are very close together. My third most popular lead source was word of mouth. And that just means other people in the industry referring me, whether it is peers, or whether it is clients referring me to other clients, really great way to connect with people. And I find that the leads that come in from word of mouth are really strong. They're ready to work with me. They're excited to work with me because they've heard such great things from the people that I've worked with in the past. So I highly recommend focusing on word of mouth, giving your past clients a reason to recommend you, making sure you have a really solid client experience, collecting those testimonials, and then just reaching out and staying in touch with your past clients to make sure that you're maintaining those relationships so you stay top of mind, so they'll be reminded to recommend you in the future. Instagram is another channel that I show up on somewhat frequently. 
I will say I did not make a huge effort with Instagram in the last year. In 2022, I tried to post on Instagram stories almost every day. And in 2023, I was like, this just isn't sustainable. This is not what I wanna be doing with my day-to-day -day routine. I much preferred showing up on something like YouTube or Google where I felt like I was building this foundation of content that was gonna to continue to bring me traffic in the long run. So I didn't focus as much on Instagram. So Instagram was more like, I think it was my fifth lead source, right? So it was down there on the list. But what's super interesting is Instagram was actually my second highest lead source in terms of value of projects booked. So when you looked at all of my clients and how much they spent, Instagram was definitely up there for the value of the projects. I booked some of my highest paying clients through Instagram, which is really exciting considering I was barely there. I'm not sure what I wanna do with Instagram moving into 2024. I would guess to say, that I probably wanna do a better job of posting on YouTube regularly, sending out email newsletters, publishing to my blog, and then having somebody on my team repurpose that content for social media and Instagram. And for that, I actually use a fabulous tool called uh, Repurpose. <laughs> Great name, right? Very obvious for what it does, but it helps you take your longer form video content and post it to channels like Instagram and TikTok. So you create the video one time and you're able to share it to all these different platforms. It will also help you back up all of your Instagram reels or TikTok videos to Google Drive, for example, so that way you have all of these short form videos saved somewhere other than these social platforms, which you just never know what's gonna happen when these platforms are owned by people. They get sold just like Twitter did. They could shut down. They could completely change how they function. The algorithms are changing all the time. So I don't want to put all of my eggs into the social media basket, I do think it's a good place to focus. So for me, Instagram and TikTok are going to be much more about a place where I can repurpose content rather than a place where I'm creating content specifically for that platform. And then, like I said, if you want to check out that tool that I mentioned, I'm going to include a link in the description below. Another fun thing I noticed while looking at my HoneyBook data was that client referrals or word of mouth had the highest conversion rate. So like I mentioned earlier, when someone refers me to somebody else, they're much more likely to book. This is very true when we actually look at the numbers. You can say it, that's one thing, but you wanna look at the numbers to actually confirm that your hypothesis is coming true. And in this case, the people who came to me from word of mouth were the most likely to convert to being paid clients. I do wanna mention that while my web design business alone did hit the six figure mark, that is not my only income source in my business. I'm a huge fan of diversifying my income and having multiple income sources. So I wanted to list those out for you. So you could kind of see like the big picture of what my business is like behind the scenes. I will also say that having these other income sources definitely adds a layer of complexity to my business because it can feel like sometimes I'm running multiple businesses. So for example, some of my other income sources from the last year were YouTube AdSense, which is not a ton of money. It started off really strong. I think in like January, February, March of last year, I think I got monetized towards the end of the previous year. So this is like my first full year of being a monetized YouTuber, which was really exciting. And the money started off fantastic. And then something changed, either like maybe one of my major advertisers stopped using those keywords to advertise, I'm not sure, but I went from making over $300 a month in AdSense, which for a really little YouTuber like me was fantastic, to making like $60 a month. So I went from being like a decent amount of income to kind of just being like, oh, I can take myself out to a nice dinner once a month or put that little bit of extra money into savings. I'm not complaining, it's still fantastic. I just don't really count on YouTube AdSense for anything other than like bonus cash flow or savings. So YouTube AdSense was one. Affiliate marketing was another one. Affiliate marketing is basically when you take products or tools that you use 
every day in your life or your business, you recommend them to other people. And when they purchase through your link, you get a small percentage, either a percentage of that, you get a small cash kickback, something like that. I'm a member of quite a few affiliate programs, basically any tool that I use in my business, I try to become an affiliate for, so that way if I recommend it or mention it to somebody else and they sign up, I get a little bit of kickback. And that can be anything from a few dollars if somebody signs up to some platforms that I'm an affiliate for, I might receive a few hundred dollars or I might receive a monthly recurring commission, which is great too. So affiliate marketing for me was a pretty decent income stream. I'd have to check my exact numbers, but I believe in the last year I made probably somewhere between five and 8,000 on uh, affiliate marketing. So I'm happy with that. And I definitely want that to be a bigger focus as I head in to this new year. My next income source is online courses and membership communities. So I have two primary online courses. One is all about SEO for small business, search engine optimization. The other is specifically for web designers and it sort of shows them all of the systems behind, behind the scenes that I use to run my business and helps them set up to kind of work in a similar way that I do. Feel free to check the link in this description if you want to learn more about that or just send me a DM on Instagram. I'm not as active on Instagram these days, but I still check my DMs every once in a while, so feel free to message me there. So I've got those two courses, which I honestly didn't promote a lot in the last year because I was so busy with client work. And when I wasn't doing client work, I was trying to stay on top of this YouTube channel, but they still did bring in some income last year. I also sell Notion templates, which are pretty um, low priced digital product. They have just been selling consistently. I think I sell somewhere between one and three a week and it'll be great because I'll be out at my favorite coffee shop and get really excited when I get a text message alert that I just sold basically the equivalent of what coffee and lunch cost me that day. So it's like a treat yourself moment when you get that little ding on your phone. So that's been wonderful. That's one of those things that it took me forever to actually set it up and build the checkout for. But once I did, I was so thankful because it was just that little bit of money coming in on a consistent basis that not that it made a huge difference to my bottom line, but it just felt really good and it wasn't all that hard to set up. So I was really happy that I took the time to do that early last year so that I could enjoy the little bit of extra income for all of 2023. And then finally, I have some sponsored content opportunities. I don't do a ton of these, uh, but for brands that I already know and love and use every day in my business, I have done some sponsored YouTube videos or emails, things like that in my business. So that brings in a little bit of extra cash too and helps to kind of round out my overall business strategy. Personally this year, I also just felt so thankful for all of the amazing clients that I had if you're a client of mine and you are watching this, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really could not have asked for a better set of clients in 2023. They were all amazing people. I hear all these horror stories sometimes of other web designers who really struggle with clients and people not responding to them or not respecting their time. I have had the most respectful, loving, caring, generous clients to work with in the last year. And I am ever so thankful for that. And I think part of that comes from my marketing strategy and comes from my processes behind the scenes, but just attracting great people is something that I could not be more thankful for. Another thing I'm really happy about is I got to travel for work more last year than I had in the previous couple of years. And it was so fun to meet some of my online business friends in person for the very first time and just to feel energized by a room of people again and to just really like get back into the vibe of in-person events. I've got a couple coming up in 2024, some that I'm speaking at, others that I'm just attending, but overall I'm just excited for more in-person events and hanging out with more of my online friends in person, whether it's at an event or just like actually proactively scheduling time to meet up with them, even though they live all around the country or even the world in some cases. But that's definitely something I'm gonna try to prioritize heading into the new year. I'm gonna be honest, I did not do the best job of goal setting yet. It's 
still there's still time for 2024. Typically I would do this in the end of December. I have a goal setting template in Notion that I fill out and just kind of check in on what I wanted to accomplish that year, what went well, what didn't, what I want to accomplish this year. This year isn't as much about goals for me in terms of like actual numerical goals or things that I want to accomplish specifically. For me, 2024 is all about how I want to feel and how I want to live my life in this upcoming year. I personally want to focus on my own mindset, my own inner peace. I'm not a very like woo woo person, but just kind of like figuring out how I want to feel and doing little things every day to help myself feel more that way. Like I, certain things, like I really wanna feel more consistent when it comes to YouTube, but I want to do that so that I can create more passive income in my business so that I don't feel as rushed during certain times of the year. I don't feel like I'm constantly answering emails when I'm on vacation because I'm overbooked in a certain season of the year. So the more that I can set myself up for success, keep diversifying my income streams. Last year, even though I did have multiple income streams, I focused so heavily on client work, which was fantastic monetarily, but it did hinder a little bit of my work-life balance. So I wanna make sure that I'm being very intentional about my work-life balance heading into this new year so I can spend more time with friends and family and just enjoy myself a little bit more and spend more time doing things that fill up my cup rather than things that empty it. So yeah, my word of the year, because every year I have a word of the year and I, it's actually been the same. I think I'm, if you're on my email list, I'm gonna send you an email about this, but it's been the same for the last couple of years. I don't think I really truly embraced the word last year. So I'm gonna try to do a better job of embracing that this year. And that word is simplify. Basically, how can I make my life more simple? How can I say no to more things that don't light me up so that I can leave space and be more open for things that do light me up and do fill up my cup at the end of the day? So that's my big focus for the new year, taking more time off, taking more time for myself, doing things that make me happy and finding more balance in business and in life. And I would love to hear from you. What is your word of the year? Drop it in the comments below. Send me a DM on Instagram. What's your word of the year? How do you want to feel in 2024, at the end of 2024? How do you wanna change your life and your business to accommodate those feelings and to help you reach that goal for yourself. Let me know, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.